Praise the Lord and good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. I trust that the Lord has been good to you. And now it's time for us just to spend a little time meditating on his word and sharing his thoughts. Let's just pray. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for another day. It is your grace and mercy that has woken us up this morning. Father, we, we are in need of your divine intervention. Many of us are facing impossible situations. And so, Lord God, we are looking to you to speak to us with the power of your word this morning. And help us, Lord God, after hearing from you, we will do that you require of us. We give you thanks and praise as we spend these few moments hearing from you. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, we're talking about prayer and just reminding ourselves that God hears and responds to our prayer. Prayer is an integral aspect of our worship, and so this will be our th topic for this morning. Our focused thought lets us know to take our need to God in prayer, and our text this morning is taken from Isaiah 37, and I'll be reading from 1 to 20 from the NIV version. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. Verse 3, they told him, this is what Hezekiah says. This is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the word of the field commander whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. When King Hezekiah's official came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, tell your master this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with the underlying of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, and there I will have him cut down with the sword. When the field commander heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. When Sennacherib received a report that Terhaka, the king of Cush, a marching out of the fight against him, when he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah with this word. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you. When he says Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you will have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely, and will you be delivered? Did the gods of the nation that were destroyed by the predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rizpha, and the people of Eden, who were in Tel Asar? Where is the king of Hamath or the king of Arpad? Where are the kings of Lair, Sepharim, Hena, and Iva? Hezekiah received the letter from messengers and read it. Then he went to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Verse 15, and Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. Lord Almighty, God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubims and alone you are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Now give ear, O Lord. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. Verse 18. Is it true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste all these people and their lands? They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them. For they were not gods, only of wood and stone fashioned 
by human hands. Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hands so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, Lord, are the only God. Now, by way of background and setting, um, this was during the time, during the reign of Hezekiah, the nation of Syria attacked, captured, and demolished the city of Lachish. Lachish was a prominent city in Judah, and Zennacherib, king of Assyria, chose it. He sent Ribshekah, his commander-in-chief, to Jerusalem and demanded that Jerusalem surrenders to Assyria or face destruction. You see, the Assyrian army was a very powerful army, and they captured and defeated many nations before, including the northern kingdom of Israel. Hezekiah knew he needed a word from the Lord. Therefore, he sent the messengers to the prophet Isaiah to share the king's words about the time of trouble in the hope that God would act. Isaiah was the right man to call. The prophet had served in the court of the kings of Judah, offering his prophecies and his advice. Now more than ever, his godly wisdom and prophetic spirit were needed. God spoke to Hezekiah through Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword of his own land. The word brought some relief to Hezekiah, but the situation was not completely over. You see, in verse 10, Hezekiah say, say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Syria. Surely you will have heard what the king of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely, and you will be delivered. In other words, don't be so foolish to think that God can help you against us, for we have destroyed many others, gods of other nations, and your God is no different, and he will not be able to withstand the force and the power of this Assyrian army. So don't let your king deceive you in thinking that God is better than any other gods and that he can help you out of this destruction that I am bringing upon you and unless you surrender to me. Sennacherib threatened to besiege the city of Jerusalem until the people have starved to death. Did the gods of the nation that were destroyed by my predecessor deliver them? The gods of Zo Gozan, Haran, Repha, the people of Eden were, were in Telassar. This was a taunt, as if it were not enough, the Assyrian listed several other examples of their conquests. Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my father have destroyed as Gozan, Hina, and Rizpha, and the children of Edom? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the city of Serephim, Hina, and Iva? The Syrians reveal the powerlessness of other gods to stop them. And here I made an observation that not only were they taunting him, but the real insult was that they were equating Jehovah God with idols. Verse 14 lets us know that Hezekiah received the letter from the messenger and read it. And then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah receives this letter and he realized that his kingdom was in trouble. And so he responds by, to this trouble by going into the house of the Lord and did what he should do spread it before the Lord. We need to verbalize our issues and speak out loud. It is only then we realize how limited we are when we actually hear ourselves pray. This is symbolic because he is in fact saying, Lord, I cannot solve this problem. Please work it out in such a way that brings glory to your name and upholds your reputation. I like what Isaiah did here, Hezekiah did here. Because not only was he concerned about his own safety or the safety of the people, but he was also concerned that God, however God chose to work it out, 
that he would get the honor and the glory. For you and I, there's no better place for us to go when we're facing impossible situations. Initially, he had called on his friend Isaiah to pray, and then he himself prayed. But he was still perplexed. He knew the power of, of God to deliver. He had heard the miraculous stories, but he also knew the reputation of the Assyrians. And sometimes we listen to too many voices. Hezekiah heard from the king of Assyria, then he heard from God through Isaiah, and then he heard again from Assyria. How we pray sometimes depend on the voices that we are listening to. Often it is the voice of the enemy instead of God. The enemy was trying to convince him that he was being deceived. And so Hezekiah holds this false message up to the Lord and basically asking the Lord to prove himself. Whatever the situation you are facing, I encourage you to hold it up before the Lord and let him know that you are struggling and that you need his divine intervention. Offer up a prayer that glorifies him as the only creator and sovereign God of the world. In verse 15, Hezekiah prayed to the Lord and, Lord God Almighty, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the cherubims. You alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth and you have made heaven and earth. So he spreads it out before the Lord and he appealed to God, the God of Israel, and he proclaimed the oneness of God in his prayer. Hezekiah wanted to make sure that God knew he was addressing him only and no other God. He says, give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to all the words Sennacherib has sent ridiculing you. See, Hezekiah was inviting God to read this letter, to give ear, to incline his ear and open his eyes. This is what they are saying about you, God. Look at this blasphemous letter and the way that they have talked about you. Verse 20. Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, Lord, are the only God. Here, Ezekiah is saying, reveal yourself and answer this prayer in a way that all the nations will know that you are God. Sometimes our prayers can be become very selfish, but we should pray, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Because God always has a bigger goal to accomplish, and he invites us to play a role in the grand scheme of his plan. It should all be to his glory. For most of us, praying can be difficult, and sometimes we make efforts to avoid it. And we see it as boring, but why is that? Let me offer some reason. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And many times we anticipate that God would respond to our prayers in a certain way. And most often, he does not. And maybe it is because we do not know God well. We are not sure how we should pray or what we should pray for. Also, we do not know our Bibles well enough. And this is where God speaks and reveals himself, his thoughts, his heart to us. I am wonder I'm also understanding that people who know their Bibles well do not have difficulty praying. And maybe we do not feel the need for God's help. Somehow we think we can get along without God and we only seek him when we are in trouble. When we do not make prayer part of our daily lives, we are in fact living a self-sufficient life. This was not Hezekiah's attitude. He knew he needed God. And so he exposed his heart to God in prayer. Praise God. When the threats of life have the potential to become more than just taunts from the enemy, we must put our trust in God. Hezekiah faced a difficult situation, and he likely felt afraid because the Assyrian had destroyed many nations before, 
and they were seemingly on an unstoppable force. They had decimated countries, eliminating res resistance and punishing those who opposed them. Now I want you to think of a crisis that you face. How did you react? How do you hope to react if you experience another time of difficulty? In those times of discouragement and fear, usually we may find it difficult to pray. Sometimes we feel frozen, at least that's been the experience of mine, unable to act in such a critical point. It is during these times we must summon our faith and courage to seek God's direction for our lives. We must press past the fear, the logic, and see the power of a faithful God who delivers. Logic has no, was not Hezekiah's thought. The threat was dire. The Assyrian had ability to back up their taunts unless God intervened. He often faced enemies, we often face enemies that are more than real. When we, sickness has invaded our body, we know that the enemy has the potential to do harm. Right now, the situation with COVID-19 has, is threatening another lockdown, but we will not give up on prayer. This, as a matter of fact, the situation should motivate us more to pray without ceasing. But my concern is that over time, if the situation lingers, we will cease to pray effectual and fervent prayer. And we will just accept it as our new norm, despairing that we cannot do anything else. This is what the enemy wants us to believe. So what bill, letter, text, or email do you need to lay before the Lord this morning? The story is... Isaiah is powerful because, and I took the time to go through it because it was a very timely message for us today. It reminds us that God hears our prayers and oftentimes we become caught up in the taunt of the enemy. The words lingers in our ears and threatens the faith in our hearts. But thankfully we can pray to the Lord who delivers. We can also be thankful because we have men and women of God who will speak to us prophetically in times of trouble. Think about a time in your life when a man or a woman of God ministered to you. How did you feel after this person spoke to you? And did you receive the word from the Lord and follow the advice? Let me go down to verse 33. It reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it from mine own sake and for the sake of David's. Then the angel of the Lord, verse 36, went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrian 104 score and 5,000 when they arose early in the morning. Behold, they were all dead corpse. Verse 7 lets us know Zanacharib, king of Assyria, had departed and returned and dwelled at Nineveh. When the Lord called on the prof prophet Isaiah to speak to Hezekiah, the prophet had a word from the king of Assyria. The monarch had made a terrible mistake by taunting the God of Israel. The Lord shared some of his history with the king. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of many of ancient times that I have formed it? Now I have brought it to pass. See, Hezekiah learned a great lesson here about the power of prayer and that he can trust our God to be faithful. Why? Because it all came to pass through that prayer. Maybe things would have resulted differently had Hezekiah not prayed at the prayer. 
So how can you partner with someone, a friend, a brother or a sister, who you know is facing a dire situation? I pray that you would be a source of strength and encouragement to someone who may be facing a challenging situation. Now let's internalize this message. Sometimes our problems overwhelm us so much that we enter a state of denial. Hezekiah did not fall prey to denial, and neither should we. When we hear the mockings of the enemy or receive bad news or uh, bad situations that we're about to face, that we need to express that real problem to God, and we should read it to him. Our honesty does not mean that we, are, we have lacked faith. And so we need to um, place denial where the opportunity and give God the opportunity to act on our behalf. So be reminded to, that God hears and answers our prayer. Don't lose heart. God is faithful to keep that which is committed to him. May God bless you and enjoy the rest of the service. <laughs>